Yugi versus Yami Yugi. Ah, you thought the final episode was the only time these two dueled. Well, it turns out during the week in the Dragon's Ark, after Yami's defeat at the hands of Raphael, Yami is sent on a journey of rediscovery, where he must overcome his inner darkness and self-doubt by taking on a spooky ghost version of Yugi. The twist to this duel, which makes it kind of memorable, is that both duelists are playing with the exact same deck with their cards in the exact same order. This means the duel is all about who is more efficient with the cards that they have, as the first person to misplay will probably cost themselves the duel. Or at least that was how the duel was supposed to be. Spoilers, Ghost Yugi is the one to lose after he purposefully shuffles his deck to change what he draws. And we'll learn more about it as we go through the duel, but I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't really like how Ghost Yugi duels. He is a shell of his real self. You'll see what I mean as we jump into the duel. The duel begins and Yugi goes first. He draws and his opening hand consists of Gazelle, the King of Mythical Beasts, Sangan, Dark Magician Girl, Alpha the Magnet Warrior, Polymerization, and Monster Reborn. Yugi decides that the best play he can make on the first turn with this hand is to set his gazelle, the king of mythical beasts, face down and end his turn. Now, I'm going to have to assume that Yugi doesn't know that they both got the same hands and are going to draw cards at the same rate as each other at the start of this duel. I'm just going to have to assume he's oblivious, the same as Yami Yugi at the start. Because if he's not oblivious, this is the worst possible play he could have made. And I mean, regardless, even if he doesn't know what cards Yugi's got in his hand, he could have just played a much better play anyway. He could have set that Sangan face down so that at least when it's destroyed, he could get another monster from his deck straight to his hand. Even better, set that Alpha the Magnet Warrior face down. That thing has 1700 defense. I mean, it's his deck after all. He should know that Yami won't have a card in his deck that is easily summonable so early in the duel that can get over a 1700 defense monster. It's it's just mad. And regardless of all that, with Gazelle the King of Mythical Beasts in his hand and polymerization, why not hold on to Gazelle? Just wait a minute to see if he draws Berthamet or if even Yami Yugi uses Berthamet and gets his in the graveyard so he can fuse with it from his hand or steal one from the opponent's graveyard with Monster Reborn. There's so many better options. He just picked the worst one, but it's done now. Let's move on. It's Yami's turn, and he draws. His opening hand consists of Gazelle, the King of Mythical Beasts, Sangan, Dark Magician Girl, Alpha the Magnet Warrior, Polymerization, and Monster Reborn. Deja vu, am I right? Well, let's see what Yami can do with this hand. Yami starts by summoning his Gazelle, the King of Mythical Beasts, to the field into attack. He uses it to attack and destroy Yugi's set Gazelle. With no more moves, Yami ends his turn. I know there wasn't that much in this turn, but this turn was actually fine for Yami. This was a fine play. It's Yugi's turn, and he draws Berthamet. Yugi insanely sets his Sangan face down and ends his turn. Why? Why would you do that? Summon your Alpha the Magni Warrior. Monster reborn the Gazelle in the graveyard. Activate Polymerization. Make a Chimera. Attack over Gazelle, then attack directly. That's 2,000 damage. This misplay is actually so obvious that it's actually called out by Yami Yugi on the next turn. He even comments on the fact that a single misplay can create a domino effect for the rest of the duel, resulting in a loss. And he's right. Had Yugi done this play, he would have been in a much better off position. And had he set that Alpha the Magnet Warrior on his first turn, it would have survived the attack from Gazelle the King of Mythical Beasts. Yami would have also taken some damage from this. This turn, Yugi activates Polymerization, makes Chimera, activates Monster Reborn to bring back Urphamet, Normal Summon the Sangan, switch the Alpha the Magnet Warrior into attack, and win. Now, if I had to give a defense for these mad plays that Yugi is doing, Perhaps he is trying to create a very specific endgame. He's trying to create the endgame between Yami and Raphael, where the catapult turtle was on the field and he started sacrificing his monsters. At the end of the day, this apparition of Yugi is trying to teach Yami a lesson in order to conquer his own darkness, so that would make the most sense. But if that's the case, it's just a little bit of a letdown because I like it when people go for the win, even if they're trying to teach a lesson kind of thing. Regardless, Ghost Yugi, you had a fantastic win on a platter, but you threw it all away. Misplay to you. It's back to Yami, 
and he draws Berthamet. He immediately activates his polymerization, fusing the gazelle on his field with the Berthamet in his hand to fusion summon Chimera the Flying Mythical Beasts. Yami then normal summons his Alpha the Magnet Warrior and uses it to attack and destroy Yugi's set Sangan. Since it was sent from the field to the graveyard, Yugi can now add a monster with 1500 or less attack from his deck straight to his hand. Weirdly, the animation here makes it look like he adds Alpha the Magnet Warrior to his hand, but we know that this can't happen because he already has it in his hand. However, since the card he adds doesn't matter too much because he's going to discard it on the next turn, let's just say it's Gamma the Magnet Warrior. It fits the criteria and it's kind of like the card it looked like he added, so Gamma. Regardless, it is here that it's revealed that adding the card was not the point of this play. It was actually so that Yugi could shuffle his deck meaning he will no longer draw the same cards as Yami throughout the rest of the duel. This is a good and bad thing. It's a good thing because, well, the opponent doesn't know what he's got in his hand and what he's going to draw from now on. It's just a bad thing because now you won't know what your opponent's going to draw anymore. So, yeah. Anyway, Yami orders his Chimera to attack Yugi directly. Yami ends his turn. It's worth noting that Yami could have also used Monster Reborn if he wanted to and brought back Gazelle and done an extra 1500 damage on top of all of this. But I think using that would have been a bit of a, an overextension since he wouldn't have gone for game there. So I think saving this card for later is the better play, so no misplay. He's going to lose it on his next turn, but there was no way of him knowing that. So it's fine. It's Yugi's turn and he draws Card Destruction. Yugi sets his Monster Reborn spell face down and then activates Card Destruction. Now, both players are forced to discard their entire hands and then draw the same number of cards they just discarded. Yugi discards five cards. Just to keep you up to date, the cards he discards are Dark Magician Girl, Berthamet, Alpha the Magnet Warrior, Gamma the Magnet Warrior, and Polymerization. Yugi draws five new cards. He gets the Seal of Orichalcos, Queen's Knight, Obnoxious Celtic Guardian, and two mysterious cards that we will never see played throughout the rest of this duel. I don't know what they are, but they're not helpful in any way I don't think. So I don't know. What could they be? Yami discards three cards. Dark Magician Girl, Monster Reborn, and Sangan. He draws three new cards. He gets Giant Soldier of Stone, Divine Wind, and a mysterious card. He will never play this card throughout the rest of this duel as well. No idea what it is. Who knows? Now, I've been moaning a lot about Ghost Yugi's plays in this duel, but here is where I have to have a little bit of a moan about the animation, specifically cards in the hand. This happens throughout the entire episode, but this is the bit that I noticed the most. The first error is Yugi draws card destruction, but he sets it straight face down as soon as he draws it into a monster zone. We actually see it on his dual disc in the next shot. However, ignoring that, it's still an error in the fact that he drew card destruction and set it face down. This is a mistake because the card he actually set face down is Monster Reborn. We know he couldn't draw Monster Reborn here, because we saw it in his hand earlier. So that's two or three animation errors already, but we're still not done. Yugi is supposed to have seven cards in his hand at the start of this turn. However, we see him with only four. He then sets the Monster Reborn face down and activates card destruction, so he should now have five cards in his hand. Except, we see him draw four cards, and then in the next shot after that, he's holding seven cards in his hand. Luckily, this doesn't affect the plays that are made, but it just looks awful on screen. I just didn't like it. It's just, you know, it's just one of those things. Anyway, Yugi, having drawn the Silivari Kalkos, activates it. Now, all of Yugi's monsters summoned will gain 500 attack. The seal can't be destroyed by card effects. Monsters can be summoned into the spell and trap zone. Monsters in the spell and trap zone can't be attacked if there's a monster in front of them. And monsters can be moved back and forth. And allegedly, all monsters become dark, but... I can't remember if we confirmed that. I, I talked about it in the Oracalcos video. I can't remember, but anyway. Yugi activates his set Monster Reborn to bring back Dark Magician Girl. He then normal summons his obnoxious Celtic Guardian into attack. With both monsters boosted by the seal, Yugi enters his battle phase and attacks and destroys Yami's Alpha the Magnet Warrior with obnoxious Celtic Guardian. He then attacks with Dark Magician Girl, destroying Chimera the Flying Mythical Beasts. Since Chimera was destroyed, its effect special summons a Berthamet from Yami's grave to the field. He summons it into defense. With no more plays, Yugi ends his turn. It's back to Yami, and he draws Big Shield Gardener. With little options, Yugi summons his Big Shield Gardener into face-up defense and ends his turn. 
Why he didn't summon it into face down defense, I will never know. It only annoys me more in this duel because Yugi on his first two turns was summoning monsters in face down defense. So you have a 2600 defense monster summoning face down defense. I don't know. I don't know why they don't do it. It's Yugi's turn and he draws magic formula. He normal summons Queen's Knight to the field. He then activates magic formula, which increases the attack of a spellcaster type monster by 500 points. He equips it to his dark magician girl. Yugi enters his battle phase and attacks and destroys Berthamet with Queen's Knight. He then attacks and destroys Big Shield Gardener with Dark Magician Girl. Finally, Yugi attacks directly with Obnoxious Celtic Guardian. Yugi ends his turn. Now, an alternative play that Yugi could have done here was at the cost of 600 life points, he could have used his Queen's Knight to attack into that Big Shield Gardener. Because he should know this, it's his own deck after all, when Big Shield Gardener is attacking defense, switches into attack after that battle. So that means Yugi could attack with his Dark Magician Girl, inflicting 2,900 damage. This would put Yami Yugi's life points down to a mere 200. Finally, he could have used Celtic Guardian to mop up the Berthamet on the field to leave Yami's field completely empty. Would this play have changed the outcome of the duel? No. Basically, on the final turn, when Yugi tributes his Queen's Knight to deal a thousand damage through his Catapult Turtle's effects, we have a new problem. Our life points are too low, and Yami's Divine Wind will get us even quicker. The only alternative that there could have been was with the Catapult Turtle on the field if it tributed itself to deal the damage. Now, I don't think that would ever happen because in the anime, it only ever tributes other monsters so it can launch them. I can't see it launching itself. But if that was the case, it would have dealt 750 damage to Yugi, which would have attempted to go for game. Yugi would have played his Divine Wind, which would have dealt the same damage back to him, plus 500, which was 1,250. With 1,300 life points, we'd survive with 50, but we've got rid of Divine Wind. So as soon as Swords of Revealing Light ends, it might have changed the outcome of the duel. And if you would have thought to yourself, oh, but Yugi's monsters in attack would be a hindrance because if any of them get attacked, he's going to lose. We could always move those into the back row since he does have the Seal of Orichalcos on the field. So he could have kept them safe with his Dark Magician Girl on the front row. I'm seeing nothing but misplays from Ghost Yugi here. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, it's Yami's turn and the penultimate turn of the duel. He draws and gets Swords of Revealing Light. Yami sets his Divine Wind counter trap face down summons his giant soldier of stone in face-up defense, and finally activates Swords of Revealing Light to prevent Yugi from attacking for three whole turns. Yami ends his turn. It's Yugi's turn, and the final turn of the duel. He draws and gets Catapult Turtle. Going for his end game, he tributes his obnoxious Celtic Guardian to summon his level five Catapult Turtle. Yugi immediately activates its effect, now, by tributing a monster, he can inflict damage equal to half the tributed monster's attack. By doing this, he can win despite being unable to attack. This is also a mirror image of the end game of the Raphael duel, except swapped. Don't you see? Ghost Yugi is his inner darkness. He's doing his darkest plays and he's using the Silvoric Elkos. It's crazy. And so, Yugi tributes his Queen's Knight. Half of its attack is dealt as damage to Yami. Yugi then activates Catapult Turtle's effect again, this time tributing his Dark Magician Girl. Since Dark Magician Girl has 3000 attack, Yami would take 1500 damage. However, before the damage can be dealt, Yami activates his counter trap, Divine Wind. This card negates any effect damage he would take and instead inflicts the damage back to the opponent plus an extra 500. And so, Yugi takes 1500 damage plus the 500, which is the perfect amount of damage for Yami to win the duel. Now, aside from that very specific trap card that just literally just won the duel at the very end, I think, yes, Ghost Yugi played some absolutely wacky plays throughout this duel that made no sense and were always the worst possible plays he could have made. I think the reason he did those plays was because he wanted this specific end game so that Yami Yugi could conquer his darkness. Which means that analyzing this duel might have been a little bit pointless. Which is such a shame as well, because I really like the concept of both players having the same deck and the same opening hand and drawing the same cards. And it all comes down to who can play the best possible plays they can with the same cards that they each have. And then that's where they shine through. This concept is kind of dropped four turns into this duel, which 
it would be fine. Like, oh, I've just realized if I force shuffle my deck, we will have different plays then. I can play differently. So that would have been good. I feel like this concept could be used again, but handled a little bit better in the future. This feels like a fillery kind of episode. I guess it kind of is. Would you like to watch the real Yugi take on Yami Yugi? Well, I have a dual video right here for you to check out. Or perhaps you would rather watch me play with a Yugi deck. I have another video here you can check it out now. Thank you all for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Catch you later.